All right. Can everyone hear me? Good? All right. So I'm here for a presentation on drive wiping. So it's called You Didn't Wipe Your Drives and Now This Talk Happened. So uh, who I am, I am, my name's Henry, 30, male, Utah. So uh, what I do is I'm the owner of a company called Tech Resale. We're an IT asset management firm. Uh, basically, if you're a large corporation offloading or refreshing your hardware, it comes to us. We work out a contract, and then I wipe data, destroy drives, remarket that material, whatever's required via the contract. Outside of that, attend cons, metal herb hardware, one-time Volt Champion, hope, hopefully, hopefully two. We'll know, we'll know today. So this. Uh, you know, basically what I'm going to do is just go through and show you guys a bunch of pictures that explain the process of what our company does and why drives are being exposed and why they're not being wiped. So the following is some pictures of material that's in-house. In our facility, uh, this is what comes through on a weekly basis. It arrives in different conditions and we're responsible for wiping the information off of any of the drives that are on the hard drives installed or any of the units that come in if the contract states so. But the way our company is currently configured, uh, you're not supposed to be sending us any drives. So basically any units that come to us should never have hard drives in it. This is a, this is a box that just kind of shows how we pack them. This is to show kind of the, the RAM that we receive. Uh, we, we do a lot of specking units out, bringing them to a, a certain hardware readiness so they're refurbisher ready, and then they go to other countries. We send a lot to the Middle East, South America, and China where they bring them in, refurbish them with operating systems, and then resell them out to either businesses there that can't afford new laptops or individual consumers it can really hit anybody once it gets to the other end. This is the show a little bit about the hard drives. So these hold 45 drives per box and then you can hold roughly about 2,000 drives per pallet. Then you put about 20 pallets in a container so you can do the math to see the numbers of, of drives that are coming through the system. These are from home DVRs. These are 160 gig drives as they were refreshing their old hardware, decommissioning it, they were pulling out the drives, wiping them, and sending them into the downstream. This is a rack within our warehouse. That's about 1,600 2.5 inch SATA hard drives. So these are all drives that were not supposed to be in the stream at all, let alone not be showing up with all the user data on it. So every one of these should have either been punched, ground, or have a certificate showing that the data was wiped on them. Uh, majority of them do not have that process in place. Uh, this, is, this is our Mac side. That's, that's about 1,900 Macs. Those pallets are three high. We get 112 per row and we build it up. Uh, so this is, this is basically what we do. We pick a specific model. We build it out by quantity and then we market those internationally to somebody who wants to just image them on the other side and redistribute them. Uh, these are E-Series Dells. If anybody's in here has ever used like a, a, an E6400, 6500 Core 2 Duo, uh, those have all been pretty much phased out and that's what these are, kind of going through the same process. We boot them up, test them, complete them if they're missing components and then go from there uh, as far as shipping them internationally to another customer. Those are, those are Dell D620s, D630s. Everybody's dealt with these at some point. It was probably the most popular business class laptop that was ever sent out. We hold about 4,000 of these at any time. Uh, we, we build them out into pallets, same thing. They go internationally. And these are coming from businesses. So they can have drives in it. They're not supposed to. They should have been wiped. In a lot of cases, that, that process just hasn't occurred on them. This is kind of what the final packing ends up being. They either go in a 53-foot truck, 40-foot container, start loading the material up as much as you can get it in there. And uh, they spend about 30 days on the water uh, being shipped internationally till they get to the other side. 
Uh, and this, this shows you what our final packing is. We put security tape on it, we, we send it out, you get about 336 per pallet, depending on the container. Kind of decides how much material you can get in it. And we do this all under a certification called eStewards. Does anybody in here deal with R2 or eStewards certification? Anybody in here responsible for getting rid of the hardware from their company? Good, you're all gonna learn something. So uh, we carry the eSteward standard. What that means is basically we get to pay to, to fly a guy out every year. He, he tears apart every part of our process and requires logs for every machine that's come through our facility, how it tested out, if there was a hard drive, if it was wiped, to what standard, on what date, with what process. So there's, there's definitely the infrastructure there in place to have this done right. Uh, the lesser of those standards is R2. So a lot, of, a lot of what you'll see is R2 recycling where you'll have a large school district that's refreshing computers and they'll go to a company that's R2 certified. So they'll work out an agreement where if they pull the drives, wipe them, send them downstream, then sell the hardware, they, they get a certain percentage of any of the sales of that material. So like the Max, the E-Series, things like that. There's also another side to it where metal companies will buy electronic waste and laptops fall into that category. Well, they don't have the infrastructure to wipe or test that hardware, so they send it to a company like us. Every month, they build up all the material they get, they send it to us, say we don't know what to do with it, you deal with it, provide us a report, and that's kind of our, our company focus. Um, as far as what's being exposed when those are coming to us, uh, we, we, we also get the units, if you go to a big box retailer and you drop your laptop off and they migrate your data over to your new machine, they then have to recycle or resell that hardware. Well, they don't have the infrastructure to do that, so they send that out to a company it, you know, that holds their contract for everything. Printers, scanners, servers, uh, desktop towers, any electronics you can think of. They even do microwaves, appliances, and we get just the laptop side of that. So the information that you're seeing that's being exposed in this is, you know, everything. It's, it's, it's as if you've shut your laptop off, turned it in, and then you're relying on somebody else to wipe this data. And I know that sounds kind of crazy for one of you to do that, but how many of you have a family member or a friend or somebody that would, would accept that process in the hopes that when they tell you that it's going to be wiped, it will actually be wiped? And there's a lot of people who just take it at say, face value and say, oh, hey, they're moving my data over. They're, they're a very large retailer. Clearly, they're not going to expose themselves to the type of risk that would come by letting my data get into the hands of somebody that's not supposed to have it. So, and, and, and we get everything in there. So this comes from hospitals, police stations, doctor's offices, CPAs, you have medical records left on there, social security numbers. I mean, imagine having a CPA's computer where you have their QuickBooks file left on it. So anybody's taxes that they've done and all their information is just retained and left on the computer. Just because you're a CPA doesn't mean you're in any way consumer or computer savvy. So you might have left that data on there and turned it in, upgraded to a new laptop, they moved it over, and then it ends up in the downstream where it's supposed to be properly wiped and properly taken care of. And that's, that's just simply not happening. That's, that's what I'm seeing on my end. And for an example of this, if you're wondering what the, the DVD on the right is, that's, that's a DVD from a police station. It has a case file number on it. The picture on the left is a hard drive. So this was supposed to come to us with no data in it, no hard drives, no anything. And this was before we were, this is actually what kicked off our certification, was when we saw the amount that was being left behind, we said, hey, we're going to get certified. We're going to start cleaning up after these people, and we're going to start doing it right. So the question is, is why did this happen at the first company? Because they, they carry a very similar standard, and that was, supposed to, that was supposed to be handled on their end. You'll see that I list the network configs and VPN. I mean, this, 
This is an officer's computer. He, he, he's got a very specific job. His responsibility is not to worry about how IT assets are being handled after the police department upgrades. So you clearly have a company that let down this department in their job duties. They should have gone through the optical drives. And then the question was, is, well, if your one job, your only job was to get the hard drives, why am I getting the hard drives? And, and that's, that's the question I had, is how did this end up uh, in, in our downstream? Why am I now taking on this responsibility that I shouldn't have anything to do with? And this is the reason why. Uh, there were 750 of them. The, the entire company, or the entire department was upgraded. And there was a couple outliers. So they, they took warehouse employees and they said, hey, here's the hard drive. It's on the left side. Go ahead, pull, these, uh, pull this front panel off. And because they're tough books, they're hot swappable. So you eject them, you take the drive, you grind it up. So why did I get this? Well, they had a couple replacement models. So the hard drive was on the right side. And I guess the assumption was made, if it's not on the left side, it doesn't have a hard drive. So that's how this ended up in the stream. Uh, I, I wasn't even aware of it until we got through several hundred units and somebody brought me in a hard drive and then we kind of had to reverse focus, go back through, reprocess the material and make sure we got all of those drives out of there. That's where we found the optical disk. That was dash cam footage from a cruiser. I, I, I don't know what the process is for that, but there was no filing made to request that information, and now it's being leaked into the downstream, and somebody else could just catch that. Imagine if you were working on some long-running case, and you had information that was left in the computer. It's easy for a case to go on for a year, two years, three years for an investigation, and then you can have them upgrade during that period. And information that has not been made public on that case can be pushed into the downstream. And all it takes is for it to ha end up in the wrong hands. I mean, it's, it's not a complicated process. You have uh, basically warehouse employees. You're, you're telling them what to do. They're not technicians. They don't even understand the big picture or why it's important to wipe data and cleanse machines of that information. And then you're telling them, hey, go through all these machines, grab all the drives, we'll have a different department wipe that information. But because of poor quality control, because you don't have the owners of the company coming out there, looking at it, making sure, spot checking their work, poor logging, material like this is ending up in the downstream with you know, what could be considered extremely, extremely sensitive information. So. We'll just go into a quick story. So part of our standard is I, I have to quality control check it. So I have to go to our wipe drives and I have to do everything I can to try to get any amount of data off of it. And just to verify that our logging and drive wiping process is actually occurring. But then on the other side, if you're sending me material and it's in the contract, there's to be no hard drives, there's no hard drive wiping services included, well, I'm going to go through those machines and make sure that's the case too. And then I have to audit your system. So I have to confirm that you're, you're wiping that data. So during that process, I, 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 I've had a few things happen. Um, I, I, I've had, uh, for instance, I, I've had computers where people are making, you know, home movies, triple X ones, and leaving it on their laptop. And then they're leaving a, a, a list on the desktop that is their password list to all their user accounts. They have their credit cards typed in with billing addresses and everything there. So it's easy for them to access in a text file on the desktop. Well, the first companies let them down. Now it's to us. If, if I wasn't looking for that material, it would simply go right down the downstream. So what's going to happen on the other end if somebody sees that? They're, they're, they're going to grab that video, and then they're not even going to have to research how to find you. They have your Facebook login. They're going to be able to create the list of people that they want to send that to, to extort you, to, to use it on so many different levels. And what's worse is you're going to say, oh, no, I have, I have a data leak. Clearly, they're getting onto my computer and stealing my information. And no matter what you do, no matter what process you put in place to plug it, it's it, that is simply not the case. They just have a rip of all your data up to a certain point, and, and that's what they're going to have. 
And it, it goes the same thing for, uh, you know, doctor's offices. It's, it, it's the same way. How do, how do they handle your files? If you ask a doctor, how do I know my data is secure? What's he going to say? Oh, well, we have an IT company. They handle it. Okay, what do they do with my drives? How do I know they're being wiped? You talk to them. Oh, well, they, they drop it off at a certified recycler. Okay, well, where's the logging on that then? Show me where that actually happens. I, I run an IT company. I know how often doctors just say, make it work. I don't care what happens to the extra hardware. And it just gets pushed into some recycling program that may or may not handle that correctly. I've also had a machine where you had clearly the, the, the mother of the family, and she had all of her children's tax returns, birth certificates, social security cards scanned in in neat little files right there on the machine, college applications, once again, all her logins, passwords, everything. That's the kind of material that's making it into the stream. So you're saying, oh, well, I'm secure. I, I, I know I encrypt my data. It's like, yes, but you can be collateral damage and somebody else who's not doing this. How many people in here, when they're asked for help from a family member on IT stuff, just say, oh, I don't do that. It's, you know, that's, I, I don't want to spend any time on it. That, that's half the audience here that doesn't want to be the, the family IT guy when really they should say, you know, hey, make, make sure you're wiping your data. Make sure, make sure you're taking care of the hard drive or, or at least not leaving it in there if it's so important for you to recycle this material. And these are just some of the people that we see that, that produce this information. Um, so you think it's not just me preaching on this as well. Blanco did a study on this. If, if any of you are familiar with Blanco, they're a professional grade, software based, hard drive wiping service. So they went through, bought 200 random hard drives off the internet, and ran the highest level of data recovery that they could on it. And, and this is what ended up coming out from 200 hard drives that were supposed to be wiped, too. So 67% of the used drives, solid state drives, hold personally identifiable information. 11% contain sensitive corporate data. Uh, analyzing the 200 drives, company emails recovered in 9% of the drives, and that's not a partial, that's not one company email, that's your entire, you know, PST, that's your entire Outlook file, and this includes servers as well, this isn't just personal computers that they were going after on this. Uh, you know, 30%, 36% of the U.S. hard drives con containing residual data had been improperly deleted by simply dragging files to the recycling bin or using the basic delete function. And this is what we see a lot of the time is we have companies that go through, pop the drive in and delete the partition. So now the drive's unallocated, that's it. They're saying, hey, we wiped the drive, that's the extent of it, you don't see any information on there. And the only reason that that is getting through, the, the, the reason that's occurring is because there's, there's no value in properly handling any of your data. So to wipe your data costs money. That's all there is to it. And you might be saying, yeah, well, if they get a lawsuit against them, isn't that gonna cost them more? That's great, name one time it's ever happened. There's never been a recycler that said, hey, you were part of this downstream, that, that you let hard drives with my information go through, and the logging's so incomplete, you would never even be able to trace that back up the chain to figure out where it came from. But you're basically coming down to warehouse employees that have, and companies that have no financial motivation to handle your drive correctly. And if that's the outlook that they're taking, then why as a company would you even risk leaving your drive in there? The, the, the difference on the recovery side as far as value is, is minimal. There's, there's almost no additional profit in there, and there's only this huge risk for you. So pull the drives out, grind them up, get rid of them. You know, all I do is I run a simple undelete program at most. If the data's not just sitting there on the drive, I run an undelete or partition restore program, brings right back all the directories, I throw WinDIR stat at it to quickly parse through those directories and say, hey, yeah, all this information's on there. Because I do have to confirm that they didn't wipe the drives, do a new installation of Windows, and it's not just 
hey, it's a basic Windows, because that's okay. You can leave the operating system on there. That's fine. I just need to quickly decipher if it's a fresh install or somebody who actually left everything on there. So where do they go when they're bad, though? What, what happens when your hard drives are partially failing, don't pass the smart test, broken, whatever it is? Where, where do the hard drives end up? They're going to be recycled, but how are they recycled? Do they go to a smelter stateside? Do they go overseas? Well, a company came to me and couldn't get a straight answer. They were sending one container every three days to a facility over in China that was processing hard drives and power supplies for them. These were fully packed container, one every three days, and they weren't giving them the correct logging. So they asked me to look into the company for them. Well, I found out this company was getting five 40-foot containers a week of this material, and it was going to a 6,000-square-foot warehouse. So there's, there's absolutely no space available for these hard drives to handle them correctly, to wipe them correctly, to destroy them. They do not have the infrastructure. So on that side, they're taking them, they're recycling them, they're smelting them for precious metals. But you better believe that they see the opportunity that, hey, if that drive works, if it's in okay condition, I, I'm going to pull the data from it. Because why this looks like they're all just thrown in there, you can get companies that are upgrading servers and ship their drives this way. Pull them all out, throw them into Gaylords, send them down the stream. And now you have all of this being exposed on the other side. So, and... Uh, another reason and, and why this is happening beyond the, uh, the, the financial motivation is the new technology as well. How many of you guys have seen machines with INAN, integrated NAN on the board, MSATA drives, solid state drives, somewhere hooked into those laptops? Well, nobody's trained on that. Nobody in the, so they pull a 2.5 inch drive out or they don't see a drive in there and they say, oh, it doesn't have a hard drive. They, they don't know how to, that looks like a wireless card to them, an MSATA drive. INAN is integrated onto the motherboard. It's a 16 gig or 32 gig flash drive paired with a spinning hard drive. And then they use Intel to bond those together and speed up the boot time, operating system. Everybody's aware of how that works. But the problem with that is, is you're not wiping any of the data on that. You're pulling the drive and simply assuming that everything's, hunky-dory on it and it's it's not that all the data is being left on it now nobody's wiped it and that's that's being dropped into the downstream so we're seeing that material all the time we're seeing that happen a lot more because you have a lot more of these newer systems being pushed onto the second-hand market that's why we're seeing the INAND you know we're, we're, we're seeing the MSATA drives we're pulling those and a lot of people don't even have the technology to wipe them because now they don't use the standard wiping connection, which is what these very large wiping systems are set up for. SATA or SAS, uh, nobody wipes ID anymore, they just grind them, and they're these large racks that just hold a hundred drives and wipe them all at once. Well, now you can't put NGFF drives in there, MSATA drives, you know, uh, INAN you have to boot to the machine, because it's, it's literally built into the motherboard or drill it out to get any of the data out of the drive. So that's, that's basically the process that you see uh, or that I see on a day-to-day -day basis. But as far as what you can do to protect yourself, which nobody really talks about, is, is to, if, if you're in the position at a corporation where you're saying, hey, we have a 1,000 laptops, we don't have the infrastructure to wipe them, and we need to be able to do that, let's find a company that will do it, that, that's okay. There's, there's great companies out there but drill them on their hard drive wiping procedure. Say, hey, I, okay, I'm going to send these to you. What's your hard drive wiping procedure? And, and don't take them at face value. You have the right, if they do that contract, to walk in at any time, if they are R2 or E-Steward certified, and within 15 minutes, they must produce that logging. That is all there is to it. And, and if you feel that's a gray area, write it into the contract. They're going to do anything they can to get your material so you make sure that you are following up and confirming they are wiping your drives. They're required to have a serial number for every drive, and they're required to have a certificate that lists what wiping procedure was used on it, the date, and how long it took that procedure to complete. Also, 
Before your drives are wiped, they're required to keep your hardware in a secured and locked storage environment. So somebody can't just walk up. So you need to go and audit these facilities. If you're going to push that much information, that much hardware through them, if there's any hesitation, any level of I don't have faith in their process, then pull the drives on your end. Punch them, get rid of them, wipe them yourself, because we have large companies that do that and don't do it right as well. I mean, I won't name the insurance provider, but uh, they just released 15,000 laptops, uh, ran Windows 7, uh, Enterprise Edition on them. They, weren't supposed to, they were supposed to be wiped in-house. We were getting them where the laptop had a bad screen. They said, oh, well, we can't wipe the drive with our boot CD, so send it down the stream. So what's the point in wiping you know, 14,000 units and then leaving 1,000 behind? It's, you're, you're, you're letting this percentage come through. So you, you need to wipe them, you need to destroy them, you need to get rid of that information. And then tell other people about this. Other companies need to be informed on what their rights are. They think they have to walk on eggshells for one of these IT asset management companies when they don't. You're, you're the value. You're bringing the value. You have the hardware. They want your material. They're going to do whatever they can for it. So drill them and quest them, question them on it. Say, hey, when are these drives going to be wiped? OK, they'll be done within two weeks. OK, I want the logging by that time. Uh, show up to the facility and say, where are my hard drives? Their logging has to show where those are in their facility. Go to them, take one of them, and leave with it. Try some data recovery on it. Vet it. Get that peace of mind that you get by knowing they're doing it correctly. But if you show up and they, they start telling you how, oh, we, we don't have it ready. It'll, it'll be ready by end of the day. Uh, let us get that for you. Something's definitely wrong there. They're, they're not doing it right. If they need time to produce the logging or to create a spreadsheet that shows this information, then they're just, they're simply not doing it right. That's, that's all it comes down to. So they, and, and really it's, it's that follow-up that is going to be the only way that you retrain these companies that are leaking this information out. And I, I mean, it comes from corporations, all the big box stores, banks, police stations, hospitals, everything. And at the end of it, it, it is in a way costing you. Uh, insurance rate, everything else. But if that continues to happen, you'll eventually be part of that leak. Somebody will have your information, your, your CPA, your doctor will be lax with those hard drive security measures. Let them make it into the downstream and then at that point, somebody's going to recover it. These are being resold on the other end, and they will have that information. So definitely wipe your drives, punch them, go to a certified facility, and if they have a NAID certification, that's, that's probably going to be your best bet. It, it doesn't mean a whole lot, and it's, it's pretty misleading, too, because you can pay 600 bucks to be a member of NAID, and then you get to post that cert on your website. But it doesn't mean you follow anything. It means you're a NAID member. So people have a habit of saying, hey, we're a NAID member, not really that the, realizing that they're not NAID certified, which would entail an on-site audit where they come and actually view that you're wiping all the drives. They, they do it randomly. It's pass or fail. You, they don't get to show up. And you say, oh, give me some time. Let me get everything organized. No, you've either been doing it right the whole time, or you're done. And those are the best companies to deal with when you're doing the IT asset management side. So I know that was a ton of data. I had to burn through it quick. It's a long talk, or a lot of information to put in in 25 minutes. These are just some um, random pictures of our warehouse. This is usually how we receive them for uh, the units. We, and to give you some idea of volume and quantity, last year we did 175,000 laptops. So even at a very small percentage, we're getting those drives. So no matter what you draw that out to, but you saw the rack that was from one month that had 1,400 drives on it. That was the one in the facility, and there was more in the other room. So any questions? You. Right, so, and that's one of the sections that you haven't caught up to as far as the standard coming with a specific requirement for that. 
So there's bridges for the MSATAs, but you basically have to build out a box to do it. But you have to run a certified program, like uh, Blanco's a really good one, uh, Drive Plus is another, that will not only see the drive, but if you have a, some custom thing in there, like a custom HPA, a host protected area, it will identify those other areas that there can be information on. But it's a similar process, and with SSDs, the issue you run into is with the wear leveling, it can you know, knock off a section that still had data in it that makes it unwritable. And if somebody's determined enough, they're gonna go after that. But for me, the value of SSDs, while there is some, is not high enough to risk it. If you're buying SSDs and you're dropping them into the recycling stream, the value you're gonna be assigned to those is gonna be on the order of five, seven dollars a drive. That's what you're going to get. That's what you're risking your exposure on, is that they're gonna wipe your data for that. Because they're, they're not gonna assign high value back to it. Other than that, it's, it's just basically the same programs. It's, it's software that's certified to wipe SSDs. But they're usually doing it through bridges and custom interfaces. Anything else? Those are more hard drives. And that's a company that deals with hard drives. So that's what their warehouse looks like. And that's who you're trusting to properly identify, remove, and wipe your hard drive. But hey, they're an electronics recycler, so they got to know what they're doing. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. I appreciate it.